Guys, it is finally here. Atlas OS Windows 11 support is a custom version of Windows 10. It started life as a simple ISO that you just put on a USB stick and installed on your computer. It was really good. They stripped out a lot of components out of Windows and made it incredibly good for gaming and very optimized and a very nice user experience. However, that got a little bit dated, so they went over to Playbooks, which is definitely the future of installing custom operating systems. However, even with the Atlas OS Playbooks, Playbook and AME Wizards and all the good stuff that bought, it was still running on Windows 10 22H2. Now everyone was asking, including me, for a Windows 11 version and they took their time, but today it has finally come out. So we're going to be taking a first look at it in this video. All right, guys. So here we are on the new Atlas OS website. It's been completely redesigned. So let's take a quick look at it. So we've got Atlas OS, a modification of Windows designed for gamers. It's time to experience a new Windows experience designed for gamers with improved frame rates and lowered latency. So yeah, it's interesting now that they call it a modification of Windows rather than its own unique operating system because we now install this through AME Wizard and Atlas OS is now a playbook, which I'd say is definitely the way forward for custom operating systems. Anyway, we've also got some recommendations from various tech blogs. We've got Windows upgrade to Atlas. Windows is slow, clunky and unreliable. Atlas brings life back into your Windows system. So we've got improved performance, latency and privacy. Now they claim that we've got a 2 to 10% CPU usage decrease. We've got a 2.3 gigabyte to 1.2 gigabyte deduction in RAM usage and improved FPS. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this holds up. We've got five star reviews across the board. It's an open source project. And we've even got a bit here from Linus Tech Tips himself. They've also got a forum as well for people who've got problems installing and they've also got documentation which is definitely recommended to read through before you attempt to install Atlas OS. So we're going to be installing the new Atlas OS version for Windows 11 on my low end PC. So first of all you need to go ahead and make a Windows 11 USB. I'm sure you guys know how to do this but if you don't then in their documentation it tells you how to do it. So to download the ISO, just go to this website. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Just go to the download Windows 11 disk image ISO, select your edition, select your language, and it should download really quickly straight from Microsoft servers. Once you've done that, use a program like Rufus to burn the ISO to your USB. You just plug in your USB, select it here, select the ISO, and make sure if you've got an older system that maybe doesn't have TPM or secure boot to just bypass those things. Rufus has a really good tool to do that so you can pretty much install windows 11 on whatever computer you want so yeah i'm sure you guys know how to make a windows 11 usb so i'm gonna go ahead i don't have a product key here now it's very important that you choose windows 11 pro edition it's not recommended to use windows 11 home so make sure you select windows 11 pro like i'm doing here and then otherwise it's just a simple windows 11 setup and boom there we go windows 11 is installing now, I can't remember if I checked the option to skip the setup in my USB. So I'm going to go ahead and go onto my desk and disconnect my Ethernet cable because we do not want any drivers or anything installing on this system. OK, yeah, I did select that on Rufus. It's pretty much just set my time zone, my user account name, no passwords and skipped all the telemetry questions. All right. One thing I forgot to mention is because we do not have Internet, we're not going to be able to install AME Wizards or the Atlas OS playbook. So I'm just over here on my main computer and I've downloaded the two files from the website, which I'll leave in the description down below. So it's recommended that you just drag these two files onto your Windows USB. And then when we plug this in on the other computer, we can just open these up and we're good to go. Let's get back and install Atlas OS. All right, guys. So now we're at a little bit of a crossroads. So we've got our Windows 11 installed. We've got AME Wizard and the Atlas OS playbook on here. Thanks to putting that on my USB. But now we need to decide which road we're going to go down. So we can either reconnect my Ethernet cable, run Windows Update and get all my necessary drivers. Or we can install my network driver, my graphics driver and all of my drivers that I might need manually. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to install things manually. So what you need to do for that is you need to go and unzip the Atlas OS playbook and make sure you click on this disable automatic driver installation. So what that will mean is we can actually plug in our Ethernet cable click on this windows update won't run and we can just go on annoyingly edge and find some drivers to install for this system 
Then after that, we can run the Atlas West playbook and see what they've changed. So yeah, let's go ahead and disable this. Just click on run and it just adds that to the registry for us. So yeah, I'm going to go plug in my ethernet cable, get some drivers installed and let's run Atlas West playbook. So before we do anything, we need to make sure that we have got our antivirus disabled because this is going to do a lot of tampering that Windows will not like. So just go onto your Windows Defender like this, go into virus and threat protection, go to manage settings and make sure you turn off real time protection, cloud delivered protection, automatic sample submission and tamper protection. All right, now let's go ahead and extract the AME wizard from its zip file here. And we'll also go ahead and extract the Atlas OS playbook, which will transform this install of Windows 11 into Atlas OS. So before we do anything, let's just have a look at our task manager here and see how many processes we're running. So this is a standard version of Windows 11. We've got all this bloatware in the start menu. We've got obviously loads of pre-installed apps and stuff as well. And we've got 136 background processes. So it'd be very interesting to see how much Atlas OS Windows 11 edition can get this down to. I'm honestly so excited. Right, let's not waste any more time and let's get into this. Now, you don't have to do a fresh install of Windows 11 to run Atlas OS. I'm only doing that in this video just to show new people how to install it. But if you're running Windows 11 Professional and you want to risk your system, you can go ahead and download AME Wizard and the Atlas OS playbook and pretty much do what I'm about to do now. However, I would recommend definitely backing up your files or you can just do a fresh install in another drive on your computer just to play around with Atlas OS before or you commit to installing it on your main drive. Right, let's go ahead here. So we've opened up AME Wizard. So running the AME Wizard is really simple. It's pretty much just like a Windows setup wizard. You just drag in the playbook here for Atlas OS, go through, press next, next, next. As you can see, we meet the requirements. So let's go to next, next, agree to the license agreement. And we can also configure our options, which is a new thing that's been added in this new version of Atlas OS. So we can go ahead and choose if we want to enable Defender or disable Defender. So we're going to go ahead and enable Defender as it's the recommended. We're just going to go again with the recommended. But yeah, really good that they include all these configurable options. Lots of people in the community have been saying to add this kind of stuff. And I'm really glad they're listening and just improving the experience. We can also remove Microsoft Edge. Finally, I'm going to be really happy to see that finally go disable Bluetooth and power saving. We can also change what default browser we're going to have as well. So since Microsoft Edge has been disabled, we can choose from Brave, Waterfox or Chrome. We're going to go with Waterfox because I do like Firefox, but I guess Waterfox is the closest. So yeah, that's that. That's all of our configurations completed. All right, here we go. Atlas OS and it's just finally restarted and boom, here we are in Atlas OS Windows 11 edition. Let's go. So first of all, we've got a really nice Atlas OS blue themed wallpaper here. Really nice, really clean doesn't get in the way. It looks really nice. So we've got Waterfox that's been installed. That's now our browser. We've got the taskbar aligned to the left here. And we've also got this Atlas folder, which has been put as a shortcut onto our desktop. Now, this pretty much is just like what you used to get on the ISOs. You can install software through here as well. We can install drivers. We can ins go into like the configuration here and mess with all this stuff in here. We've got optional tweaks as well. We'll put all of this in the Atlas folder, I think. So first of all, let's check out our task manager and see how many background processes we've got. So before, I think it was about 135. Let's have a look now. Oh, 63. Wow, that is a massive improvement. I mean, considering it was a fresh install, I literally just ran a playbook and I've got it down to 63. I wonder if we could take it even further if we ran the Chris Titus tool. That would be incredible. But yeah, let's have a look at our start menu here. So we have got the Windows 11 style start menu. So we've got all apps. These are the only apps it comes with. So we've got pretty much no bloatware, pretty much just everything you'd need, really. So we've got Xbox, if you've got a game that depends on that, for example, Minecraft or Minecraft Bedrock Edition, all that good stuff, all the essentials, basically. And it also comes with 7-Zip as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, we've got Waterfox. I've never tried Waterfox before. I'm guessing it's like Firefox, but without all the bloat and stuff. 
So yeah, it looks pretty much just like Firefox, although this top bar looks a little bit different. I'm guessing it's based off of Firefox, their rendering engine. We've actually got search indexing turned off, but you can turn it back on here. And yes, it doesn't search the internet for stuff. It just selects, it just searches through your files, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want a search bar for. And yeah, in terms of our file explorer, it's all pretty clean here. We've got some pin stuff here and it just opens by default to this PC. It looks kind of like Windows 10 like. I'm not really too sure if I'm a fan of it or not. I was kind of getting used to the Windows 11 look of everything, but maybe I'll get used to this. We'll have to see. So if we go into settings here, as you can see, my local account user profile picture has been changed to an Atlas OS logo. And also in our system here, it actually says we're running Atlas OS v0.3.1. We can also rename our desktop through here. Doesn't look like much has been changed here. I mean, we've got Windows update, privacy and security stuff's all still here, accessibility, gaming. Yeah, this settings looks fairly unchanged. We've got still got the generic uh, Windows 11 notifications area. Yeah, I mean animations. Yeah, the animations are still kind of here. We've still got this option here so we can drag around windows and put them wherever we want on our screen, which is a little bit annoying. You can turn that off in settings if you want to do that. But yeah, it just feels super snappy. I mean, the background processes just... This will breathe life into an old computer for sure. This is really good stuff here. I'm very impressed with what they've managed to do here. I've always wanted a Windows 11 version of Atlas OS and we finally got it. If you're not a fan of the Atlas OS wallpaper, it does actually come with the standard Windows 11 one, which is pretty cool. Sometimes operating systems strip out this to kind of keep the file size down. But since this is pretty much just like a customized original version of Windows 11, we've also got this wallpaper as well here, which I do actually think I prefer more than the blue one. Really nice gradient. But yeah, we can put it on the standard Windows 11 theme if we want that. I've actually got a video coming out very soon on an updated version of customizing your Windows 11. So make sure you guys get subscribed and look out for that because that is a very good video coming out very soon. Right, so we can also go ahead here and we can hide the search bar if we don't want that or just have the icon or the search box and label just like that. So that's all good. And we can also put it back in the center, which is perfect. That's kind of how I've got used to having it now. Yeah, I mean, I can't fault Atlas OS Windows 11 whatsoever. I mean, let's just have a look at the processes again. Look at that. Yeah, let's go ahead and run the Chris Titus tool because I'm really excited to see if we can get that down any further. It's just something I want to try. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and run the Chris Titus tool. So PowerShell comes on Windows 11 Atlas OS, which you'd expect. So I've just gone ahead and got the code here. I think we've got chocolatey already installed which is perfect. Atlas OS does that for us. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead. Oh, this has changed. I haven't run Chris Titus's tool in a while. Look at this. We had like a complete redesign here. All right, let's go ahead and go on the tweaks here. Let's go ahead and select desktop, delete temporary files, all this good stuff. Yeah, we'll just leave it on this. We'll just go on the recommended desktop selection, config. I don't think we need to go through any of this. And we'll put security on recommended settings. Right, let's go ahead and run tweaks. Wow, I really like the updated Chris Titus logo and the new color scheme they've got going on here. Really nice. Right, tweaks are finished. Boom. Let's go ahead and restart and see what process we get down to, if anything. All right, guys, so we just restarted. Let's go ahead and have a look at our processes once more. So we've installed Atlas OS. We've run Chris Titus's tool. 72. OK, it's actually gone up. <laughs> now bear in mind obviously we've just started up this computer so that probably will go down but yeah it looks like atlas os have optimized this operating system probably the best they can and got it to a stage where even running the chris titus tool won't make a difference so guys this is minecraft running on atlas os windows 11 version we're currently playing on 1.20.2 which is the latest version at the time of recording and our fps is actually really good we're getting about 200 fps here now bear in mind i do have my graphics card in here so on integrated graphics, it'd obviously be a lot lower. But yeah, it doesn't seem like many people play 1.8 anymore, which is quite sad. Lots of people play this new server called Hoplite, which I might check out and do some gameplay on in future videos. But we'll see how it goes. But yeah, gameplay on here is pretty good. You can play Minecraft on here. You can get a good FPS with it. In terms of background processes, while we are got Minecraft open, we're looking at about 78. So yeah, not bad. So overall, would I recommend Atlas OS? Honestly, yeah. I mean, it's perfect because it's pretty much just Windows 11, but just done perfectly. 
because we've obviously got lots of critique in the community. I know Chris Titus himself, who made the Chris Titus tool, he criticized Atlas OS for not being fully transparent with what it is that they do and made a whole video basically listing his concerns with it. And they've listened to the community, they've listened to Chris Titus, and they've come out with something that is really good. So not only is it, you know, a really optimized version of Windows 11, but it's also got all the core Windows functionality in there. Lots of, you know, mitigations against, you know, viruses. Helps to keep the end user safe and secure while using their computer, while also having a really nice optimized Windows experience. So it's super good. Now, would I install this or RevIOS? I don't know. Maybe that might be a future video. Maybe I'll compare Atlas OS and RevIOS. If you guys want to see that, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. So yeah, like I said, just be careful if you do go ahead and install Atlas OS out there. Make sure you back up your files if you're doing it on your main system. If you're doing it like me, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. And yeah, definitely recommend Atlas OS. It's been a really solid, reliable product. And yeah, they're not paying me to do this video. It's just I've been a big fan of Atlas OS and what they've been doing for a while now. So yeah, thank you guys all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And if you guys want to check out my last video where I tried to see if texture packs affect your FPS on a low-end PC, then click here and I'll see you guys there. Thank you guys all for watching.